A question has recently come up on the internet <clears throat> about what are the requirements for a valid papal election? Because people are questioning the validity of my election. But I'm not going to go into my own election. We'll go to just discuss in general what is required for the validity of a papal election. Because it might be surprising. Well, the first requirement for a valid papal election is the papacy must be vacant. Therefore, any election held while the papacy is sede plena, in other words, where the Pope's sitting, is ipso facto, that is, by the very fact, invalid, and produces an anti-pope, as has been seen during history. And then you can look all through history. There are over 40 anti-popes in history. Examples. The Western Schism, when Pope Urban VI was opposed by anti-Pope Clement VII. Okay. All now hold that Pope Urban VI and his line to Pope Gregory XII was the valid line upon the principle of first in time, first in right. If you study the Western Schism, in fact, Pope Benedict XIV has made this quite clear. Honest historians, if they look at it carefully, say yes, Urban the Sixth, because he was elected. Okay. The papacy was vacant; he was elected. The fact that all the cardinals walked away means absolutely nothing. Okay. The next requirement: the electors must be qualified. Okay. With a few exceptions, the ordinary electors, if they exist, must be the ones to elect. If they have been dispersed, as happened before the election of John the 22nd, when they were literally burned out of the place of election, they must be reconvened. If they are assembled and they are not electing, as happened before the election of Pope Blessed the Gregory the 10th, then uh, the laity were right in intervening. They boarded up the windows. They cut them from... Uh, good eats down to bread and water. When even this didn't get them motivated, they took the roof off. Finally, after a couple good rainstorms, the cardinals got together and elected a pope. And it is interesting, in this particular election, they adopted what is called compromise. It was not part of the law at the time. They selected, I think, six of their number, said, you elect a pope, we'll accept him. That six finally elected, they accepted him. So in other words, they violated the law in place at the time, and the church has never questioned that election. Okay, So ordinarily, it's the ordinary electors, whoever they are by law at the time. Now we will come, there are exceptions that have been never questioned by the church, which shows that if an election is held during a vacancy, it doesn't matter. It is considered valid, provided a few other things are uh, observed. So what is the quality of the person who is elected as Pope? Not anyone can become Pope, but a lot of people can. The one elected to the papacy must be baptized. In other words, valid baptism is essential to being elected to the papacy. An unbaptized person cannot be elected Pope. Simple. The one elected must be a man. A woman cannot be elected pope. You've heard the rumors of a Pope Joan. It is utter garbage. There never was a Pope Joan. A woman cannot be validly elected pope. This is a matter of the law of God here. The one elected must have the use of reason. For someone who does not have the use of reason cannot accept the election as Pope. Now there is a debate whether a seven-year-old who's just gained the use of reason could be validly elected or does he have to be maybe 13, 14. There are claims that there were I think a Pope elected at age of 16 to 18. Okay, Use of reason. The one elected cannot be an apostate or a heretic are schismatic, as Pope Paul IV infallibly declared in the papal bull, cum ex apostolatus officio. It's only reasonable. St. Robert Bellarmine 
Ask the question, how can a man be head of a church he is no longer a member of? Pope Pius XII declared in Mystici Corpus Christi, Apostates, heretics, and schismatics remove themselves from the church by their public act of apostasy, heresy, or schism. Now, it has to be public. And public means, you know, known or capable of being known by a small group in the place of the crime was committed. Obviously, for someone to give a speech which would be reprinted where he would say that uh, Allah, the God of the Muslims, is the one true God, is a public act of heresy, possibly even of apostasy, or near apostasy. And the person who said that, if he said it seriously, not like why I'm doing it here as an example, because I deny that statement utterly, but if he seriously said, Allah, the God of the Muslims, is the one true God, rather than the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, we've studied since we were knee-high to a grasshopper in our catechism, that's a public act of heresy. He has disqualified himself from election as Pope. And it happens by the very act. There's no excommunication required. No notice must be taken by anyone. Not only is it reasonable if one thinks it out, the laws of the church confirm this reason. So, and we discussed briefly that an extraordinary election, however, is not considered invalid, even if gravely uncanonical, in other words, in violation of the laws of the church. As the three elections by the emperor Henry III, Henry III appointed three popes in a row, including the last one he appointed, Pope St. Leo IX. The Church has never doubted the validity of any of those appointments, so a single person can elect. And he elected, and by the fact there were cardinals, ordinary electors there, available, who could elect a pope. St. Alphonsus states, that even fraud will not invalidate a papal election. We'll think about why here in a minute. Let us consider the most recent election laws of Pope St. Pius X and Pope Pius XII. The crime of simony, in other words, purchasing the papacy, does not invalidate an election. Although it is a detestable sin, it should not happen, but it does not invalidate. Okay? I could buy ordination from a bishop. It would not invalidate it. Okay? Because we're talking validity. Neither papal election law has anything that invalidates a papal election in it. Why? Because it is better to have a sinful pope than no pope at all. Okay? Think about it. We get the... Um, Rulers we deserve that principle. If we get a sinful pope, it's because we ourselves do not deserve any better. Solution? Cajun says prayer. I say convert. Become better Catholics. You want a better pope. Now true, although neither law considers the attempt of a heretic to become pope, does not mean a heretic can become pope because he is incapable of accepting the election because he is not a member of the church and therefore cannot become head of the church. Okay? So it's really quite simple. Now finally, the man elected, in other words, baptized man who is not an apostate, heretic, or schismatic, when he, he must accept the papacy in clear terms and the moment he accepts election, he instantly becomes pope even if he is only a layman, or even if he's a married man, because being married is not an impediment to becoming Pope. It is very simple. Let us review. The papacy must be vacant. That's the main requirement there. The one elected must be a baptized man who has not departed the church by apostasy, heresy, or schism. Or if he has so departed, he has restored himself to the church. Okay, he can come back in, obviously. 
and be restored to the church and then be eligible for election. It doesn't matter how extraordinary the election is. The papacy can even be bought. In fact, it was purchased. Just before Henry III intervened, the uh, pope that was in bought it from the one before him because that man was so unfit for the papacy. And he offered to sell it. The other guy, other man bought it. I forget their names. You could look it up in the history books. And the church has never doubted that. I ne when I, before I read that, I never thought that the papacy might be considered personal property that could be sold. I have absolutely no intention of selling the papacy because I think that's uh, utterly detestable. <laughs> but it would not invalidate it. So let us be clear. It does not take much for an election to be valid. Vacancy and a Catholic man elected. In any, any manner whatsoever. Whether it be one elector or 50. And more elections have been small. Six, ten, twenty. I think the largest after the Cardinals took over was like 50, 55. So... And um, there is no requirement that the universal church accept the Pope. No. The Pope is given to the universal church, and to be a member of the universal church, you must be subject to whoever is given you as Pope. This is not a democracy where we can pick and choose. Whatever God provides, and remember, God provides the Pope. Go get out your missile and look up the prayer for the Pope. I pray for Pope Pius we was said 60 years ago, whom God has appointed. Read the prayers for uh, popes that have been canonized, most of them, Pope whoever, who God provided for us, who God appointed over us. It is our duty to obey the will of God.